back and we'll lay flat on our back with our arms nice and long down by our side, knees are bent, our heels are just down from our sit bones. And we're gonna really draw the rib cage in, almost as if we're flattening the back. Uh, especially from rib cage up, we wanna ensure that nothing across the mid ribs is pulling up away from the floor in your mat. So we're seating the ribs, even if it feels like the shoulder rolls forward and in towards the chest. And we're anchored evenly from right to left pocket, a little bit off the tailbone, just so we're not overarching the low back and we're in that nice neutral spine. We are going to float the right foot just up off of the mat and really draw the abdominals in. So you're getting that nice co-contraction of abdominals and back extensors to hold the spine in neutral. And we're gonna work a modified single leg stretch just here out over the mat. So we're gonna inhale to lengthen the leg forward. We're trying to achieve a full extension of the leg without any change in the hip or in the spine in the upper, bo in the upper body. And then we're gonna to exhale to pull the foot back towards the heel. Again, that foot's floating about an inch or two above the mat, reaching out nice and long, finding that full extension. You could place hands on your hips. I like a little bit of that tactile feedback because it lets me know, are my hips moving? If I can't feel it in my own body, my hands will give me that feedback of, I've straightened that leg too far and now my hips are pushing forward. I can feel that translation. So you can always scale the movement, especially if you're really tuning into what's happening in your core, in your spine, in your hips. If you know that if you go any farther than a half extension, you lose that connection, that control, then that's your max position. That's as far as you're gonna take that extension of the leg. And then as you're able to maintain that stability, that connection in the core, you can take the extension farther. Two more on this right side. Pulling and zipping up from pubic bone all the way up to the rib cage as you straighten and lengthen that right leg. So there's a lot of that oppositional force. We're extending and lengthening the leg away from our center line, away from our midline as we're pulling up and in with our abdominals pulling the back extensors to the spine. Right foot's gonna reconnect to the mat just in line with the sit bones. And we'll move over to that left side. Again, we're gonna float the foot just up off of the mat and inhale to extend and lengthen the leg nice and long. And exhale to draw back. Again, scaling that movement as needed and you may find one side is harder or easier than the other. So you might have to scale one side a little bit more than another. Keeping that weight even from hip to hip. And as the left leg extends, seeing if you can track the right knee to make sure that it's not shifting out or in, trying to counterbalance the movement on that left side. Two more. Placing the feet flat to the mat, we're gonna work a little bit of our pelvic tilt. Pressing into our heels, into our feet, so we get that connection in the hamstring to further that connection deep into the pelvic floor, lower abdominals. We exhale to tilt the hips back, imprinting the low back against the mat, and then curling right through to neutral towards the tailbone so we have that nice flat platform across the pelvis within our three points, pubic bone, and hip bones here at the top. As we're articulating and moving the hips, we wanna ensure that there's no shift from bottom of the rib cage up. 
So we're not losing that connection in the mid back, especially as we articulate back towards the tailbone. There's no pull of the whole body forward. We're maintaining that nice neutral spine as we come to that start position. And then exhale to tilt. Remember, you can also add blocks or rolled up towels or a small pillow between the knees to find that connection at the inner thigh. That will help stabilize a bit more through the leg. It also enables you to get deeper into the pelvic floor, into those abdominal muscles. So you can always add those props if we're not doing any single leg work. Last one. Finding that neutral position. You can bring your arms down by your side or keep your hands at your hips. We'll bring the right leg up to tabletop. As that leg comes up, we draw our abdominals deep to our back, still trying to keep that little gap in the low back. And on our inhale, we're going to hinge at the hip. And again, work your scale. Scale the movement. Maybe you don't go all the way to the floor. You work just an inch or two away from the rib cage, away from the chest. Just as far as you can challenge your core, but you're not pulling the hip forward. You're not throwing your back into extension. And then you can start work on tapping the foot to the mat on that inhale. Maintaining that nice knee bend. And we inhale to hinge and exhale to lift. Right foot comes back to the mat. Check in with your alignment. Bring the left leg up to tabletop as you draw the abdominals in nice and deep. And we inhale to lower, scaling that movement as needed. You can also start off with shorter range for your first few, and then slowly start to increase the movement of the leg. So you get that feedback of where it gets harder for your core, your abdominals, to keep that engagement, to keep the spine in neutral. Last one, left side. We'll bring the foot back right in line with the sit bones. And we're going to work into our pelvic tilt and up into our pelvic curl. So we'll do just a couple pelvic tilts to prime the spine and then curling back to that neutral position. We'll do one or two more. And then we'll start to go into that lift and we're gonna work increments once again. So we're gonna draw the abdominals in, tilt the hips back and then lift. Maybe an inch or two up off the mat. We'll pause for a breath. And then slow to lower down. Now you can also do this work from a neutral spine. If you wanna keep that lumbar flexion completely out of your movement, just stay in neutral and work that little lift of the hip floating there above the mat, and then slow to lower. Just be mindful that in that lift, your pelvis doesn't slowly start to tip forward and you end up pushing your lumbar spine, your low back into extension and compressing those vertebrae. So with each repetition, guys, let's lift just a little bit higher, either in this pelvic tilt or in your neutral position. Don't forget you can add back your props at the knee, at the inner thigh.
We're keeping our mid ribs knitted in. Remember, cross the shoulder blades, the actual bones, not the tip top of the shoulder where your upper traps are here. We want to keep that slightly up off of the mat. So as we tilt, as we lift, even in our neutral spine position, we're pulling our ribs in, pulling collarbone chest away from the chin. So we keep that connection in the core and we don't move that extension into the upper back. There's no rib flare. We'll go for three more, working towards that full height of the hips, as long as you're not compromising your spine. Coming to neutral, we'll bring our knees to tabletop position, drawing the abdominals in deeper, and we're going to work on our leg changes. So we're going to alternate. And again, this is all about scale today. Smaller movements to start off with as we alternate from leg to leg, reaching the foot with a bent knee towards your mat, towards the floor, and then we slowly and incrementally increase the movement of the leg from the hip making that movement bigger, challenging our core without compromising our position. We can also add props to kind of support the low back a little bit more. So if you have a thin pillow, you could put it under the hips or even place your hands under your hips, under your pockets to give yourself just a natural little tilt of the hips back taking that pressure off the low back. We do put the back into a little bit of flexion because we're flattening the spine against the mat. But that will take some of that pressure off the front of the hip and off the low back. So scale as needed, add props as needed. And we'll go for three more each side. Bringing the feet back to the mat. We're going to bring our arms up overhead reaching overhead without the back lifting off the mat, especially through the mid back below the shoulder blades. And on our exhale, our arms flow forward. We bring our right leg to tabletop. Arms open back, the foot taps the mat, or we scale our movement for smaller movement of the leg and the hip. But we inhale to open back and exhale to lift the leg and bring the arms forward and down. Stay in your neutral spine with your head and your shoulders down, or you can add the chest lift, that fold of the mid ribs. Arms lower, chest lifts, right leg comes in towards tabletop, and we reset. Now we're working this fold at the mid ribs, keeping our low back in neutral, that little gap at the low back. And last one with this right leg. Foot will reset to the mat, we'll curl back, arms float overhead, we'll float the left foot above the mat. And then exhale, arms lower, left leg towards tabletop. We're keeping our spine in neutral, shoulders and head flat to the mat to start off with. The farther the arms and the leg move away from your center line, the more you're gonna draw the rib cage in to maintain that nice co-contraction of the abdominals, the back extensors, 
keeping that nice neutral spine, that natural curve in the back without the rib cage flare. And if you'd like to, you can join in for the chest lift here. Last two. Placing the foot flat to the mat. Curling back. Arms are nice and long down by your side. We're going to bring our heels in, turning the toes out. We're going to work back into that shoulder bridge. Pressing our heels together to engage the hamstrings. We've got a little turnout, so a little external rotation from the hip. And on the exhale, we're going to lift the hips. I'm going to stay in a neutral position. Feel free to add the articulation. And then again, I'm going to lift about a quarter, maybe halfway, so I can feel that connection in the abdominals. No rib flare. Shoulder blades flat against the mat. And lower. And then starting to lift a little higher, pushing into the heels. And working that nice, slow, controlled lift of the hips. And the slower you go, you can feel those little imbalances as your back or your hips start to twist or tip from side to side. Working on smoothing out that movement. So you have that even lift of the hips, that even descent of the pelvis coming back to the mat. Coming up to the top of the bridge or the max height that you want to take the bridge. We're going to pause here for a moment and then we're going to keep the heels together, lift the heels up and slow to lower the heels. So we're working a little bit of a calf raise in this bridge position, maintaining that connection of the heels, actively engaging our glutes at the back of the hips as we pull the abdominals, navel to spine, ribs knit in. One more calf raise. And slow to lower the hips with control. All the way back to the mat. Squaring the legs off, we're going to bring both knees to tabletop position. You could add a prop back between the knees. And we're going to go for those double leg lowers. And again, scaling is key. Slowly and incrementally increasing your movement. We inhale, hinging at the hip, lowering, reaching the knees away from the chest just a little, and exhale back. And each rep, moving the knees, the legs farther away from the chest, feet closer to the floor of the mat. Keeping the hip nice and still. Allow the legs to move independently of your back and your hips. They're just gliding in the hip itself. But the hip can stay stable as the legs start to lower.
Last one. Bring the feet back to the mat. We'll go soles of the feet together, knees, angle out and reach down for the floor for that stretch. Arms will come out to our T position. And we'll stretch and rest for just a moment. Bring the legs back to our center position. Arms nice and long down by our side. We're gonna work into some single leg shoulder bridges. We're gonna float that right foot up off the mat into a tabletop position. You could also hold the knee, pull the leg in towards the body as another option, but let's try starting in tabletop first. And you can work that curl of the spine or stay in neutral for the hip lift. And again, we're gonna scale it. Small little lift of the hip and slow to lower. And each time trying to lift a little higher. Working the scale, especially in the bridge world, really helps to ensure that we don't cause a cramp or a spasm in the hamstring right off the bat. We'll straighten that right leg up towards the ceiling, either point the toe or flex at the ankle to pull the toes back. And we exhale to lift. And with that straight leg, I'm gonna scale again, working just a little bit at a time, trying to lift the hips higher each time. Last two. Bending that right knee, placing the foot flat to the mat, and we'll change to the other side. Left leg to tabletop, and again, slow to lift. and slow to lower. And working these scaled movements, starting off slow and then incrementally increasing the movement, allows you to also see which side is harder and where is it harder. Left leg extends straight up towards the ceiling, stretching that leg nice and long. And again, nice and slow. Small lifts to begin with. And last two. Bending that knee. We're going to bring both legs to tabletop. We're going to work into our spine twist supine. You can add a block or your prop back between the knee. Once again, slight little tilt of the hip so you've got that neutral spine. Your low back's not an extension. And we're going to inhale to take the legs, the hips, and the low back as one unit over to the right. Just a little bit. And then back to center. Again, we're scaling, small movements to begin with. We're gonna incrementally increase the movement of the legs. Anchoring the shoulder blades flat against the mat. Again, the bones of the blades.
keeping that upper shoulder, upper traps off the mat so we can keep the rib cage knitted in, abdominals fully engaged. The more we twist through the mid ribs, the more we draw the rib cage in, we cinch that corset up just a little bit tighter and we inhale to reach over to that side. Each time, slowly trying to increase that movement without compromising the position of our shoulders. Once those shoulders start to lift, we lose that contact, that pressure, that's our stopping point. Last one each side. We'll bring the feet back to the mat. Reset. Right leg is going to come to tabletop position. We're going to reach that leg forward. If you've got good mobility in the hamstrings, you can come higher if you need to, to take the pressure off the hip and the low back. And we're gonna work our openings here, that single leg opening. Inhale, right leg glides out to the right and pulls back towards center. Inhale to open and exhale to close. One more. Bending that right knee, placing the foot back to the mat. Take a moment to reset, find your center. Left leg to tabletop, extend forward or slightly up. And on the inhale, right leg glides out. And exhale back. Keeping the whole right side of your body, the leg, the knee, hip and back, stable and still as the left leg moves. Last one. And bending that knee, placing the foot flat. Right leg returns back to tabletop. We extend the leg straight up towards the ceiling and we're gonna inhale to lower with a pointed toe. At the bottom, we flex the ankle, pull the toes back towards the knee and we exhale to lift. Inhale to lower and exhale to lift. Lowering the leg, I'm gonna add a chest lift. You can keep the chest lift out. I'm gonna bring the arms overhead as the leg is low, almost parallel to the floor. Exhale, leg lifts, chest lifts. And inhale to lower. Folding out the mid ribs. And one more. Bending the knee, placing the foot back to the mat. And we reset, heading over to that left side. Left leg to tabletop and extends towards the ceiling. And we inhale to lower. Exhale to dorsiflex at the ankle, pull the toes back. 
and lift on that exhale. Inhale, lower. Scaling as needed that movement. It doesn't have to be a large movement of the leg. Hold that stability, that symmetry through the body as the leg moves. Hovering the left leg above the mat. I'm going to add the chest lifts. Remember, you can leave them out as needed. And exhale, leg lifts, chest lifts. And inhale to open. One more. We're going to go into our figure four stretch, bringing the lower right leg across the top of the left, rotating the leg out from the hip, twisting that leg in the hip to start off with for a couple reps just to open and floss. And then we'll bring that left leg up to tabletop position, reach through, grab the back of the thigh, and again, we're twisting. And we'll switch. Right foot down. Left leg across the top of the right, and we allow the leg to move in the hip. And right leg to tabletop, reach through, grab the back of the thigh, and moving the leg One more breath. And we'll unwind. We're going to rotate onto our left side. Lining up in the center of your mat. Head to your arm. Stacking the legs and the hips with a little bit of a forward hinge. Bringing the legs forward to the front edge of your mat. The top right hand is resting in front of the chest. And on that exhale, we're going to lift the right leg up and slow to lower. Drawing the right shoulder away from the neck, away from the ear. Drawing the abdominals in as the leg lifts. Keeping the neck long, the spine long. We're going to hover that right leg just up above the bottom left. And on the exhale, we're going to draw that left leg up and slow to lower. Try not to put that tension into your neck or into the top of your shoulder. One more, and we'll lower the legs. Reset, make sure you're in the best position as you draw the ribs and the abdominals in. We're gonna go for our double leg lifts. So on our exhale, we lift, 
and slow to lower. One more. And resting. We'll bring our right knee forward in the sideline tabletop. We're going to drop it towards the mat. You can always put a prop under the knee to keep the leg more parallel to the floor. And that bottom left leg, we're going to do a few more adductions. We're going to exhale to lift that leg up and through and slow to lower. One more. Flipping over onto our stomachs. Hands come by the chest, the shoulders are packed back and down. Light touch of the hands to the mat. Unless you need more assistance, then push into the mat and the floor with your hands and arms. And on our inhale, we're gonna lift the chest and the head a little bit. And exhale, slow to lower. Use as much support from the arms and the hands as needed, tucking that tailbone, drawing the ribs and the abdominals in. And working that lift on the inhale. Shoulders are sliding back and down. If you're ready to float the hands, we inhale to lift. One more. Hands come to the mat. Shoulders slide down. Push into the floor, into the mat as needed. We're going to work our leg extensions. On our inhale, legs lift. And exhale to lower. Try to float the toes. Your face is slightly floating up off of the mat as well. Keep that line through the spine nice and long. And if you're ready, float the hands. Either leave them in contact with the mat and we'll go for three more. Hands rest back, curling the toes under. We're going to peel and lift up. Sitting back to the heels. Hips reach back. Stretching the spine long across the mat. And we'll switch on to our right side for the leg lifts. Laying on the right side, your torso is in the center of your mat. With legs hip stacked, we bring the legs forward slightly. Left hand is in front of the chest, pressing into the mat and the floor, and head is resting on your arm, on the bicep. On the exhale, left leg is gonna lift up and slow to lower. Nice and smooth, reaching that left leg long out of the hip. Drawing the shoulder down away from the neck, away from the ears. We 
we float that left leg up above the right. And on the next exhale, right leg lifts up to meet the left. One more. And we'll rest the legs, restack. Drawing the abdominals in, finding that zipper as you pull from pubic bone to chest. And we're going for our double leg lifts. Exhale to lift and slow to lower. One more. We're gonna place that left foot in front with a bent knee. Again, you can add a prop to keep the leg elevated more. Otherwise, rest it to the mat. Right leg reaches nice and long, straight out across the mat, and we exhale to lift, bringing that leg up and through. Two more. And slow to lower. Flipping over one last time. Onto our stomach. We're gonna reach our arms out overhead, resting the forehead and your face flat to the mat. Sometimes it's nice to put a little rolled up towel underneath the forehead just to keep the neck long and then you don't feel like you're smashing your nose into the floor. You can hover the face as long as you're not straining the neck. So we're gonna work our four corners without a lift of the upper body. We're just gonna move our limbs. I'm gonna to inhale to lift that right arm up and slow to lower and left arm. Inhale, lift and lower. Right leg, inhale, lift and lower, and to the left. We're gonna go back through those four corners, keeping your midline nice and tight, trying not to shift the spine. Resting and resetting for a moment once you finished your last set through. And we're gonna go for double arm lifts. And again, trying to keep the extension of the back out of it. Inhale, both arms lift as you brace through your core and exhale to lower. Moving to double legs. Inhale, both legs lift and slow to lower. Inhale, arms. And inhale, legs. Two more each set. Hands come by the chest, curl the toes under, peel up, and sit back for the spinal stretch. Mm -hmm. 
One more breath. And on your next exhale, we'll curl and restack. Rounding through the spine. Curling up, segment by segment, vertebra by vertebra, all the way up to that tall kneeling position. Stretching the spine long towards the ceiling as you drop the shoulders down deeper into the back of the body. Right ear to right shoulder. And back to neutral, left ear to left shoulder. And back, bring the back of the right hand to the small of your back with a bent elbow. And we're gonna go left ear to left shoulder. And back to neutral, switching sides, back of the left hand to the small of the back, right ear to right shoulder. And back to neutral. All right, guys, great work today.